job. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I just that's I just that's all I that's all I well, that divulge. We're, we're yeah. gonna, <laughs> gonna leave it right there, folks. Just see it right there. Yeah. No, basically, I handle uh, like there's a lot of uh, contractors that work with the government, yeah. and um, I help support them. Yeah. In um, you know what they can do to improve, to help throughput and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So. so. A, a very important job that allows you to enjoy your sport and what you do. Yeah. 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 So, well, we'll leave that on the table. Let, let's talk a little bit more about your progression with Spartan Racing because I know after a period of Spartan Racing, you started your own business eventually. Mm-hmm. So let, let's hear a little bit more about your career and how it transitioned um, as you started getting more and more podiums. Did you pick up some sponsors or some support as we, we talked yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. I picked up some a, a little bit of support here and there. I mean, it's kind of funny. I think the... Um, uh, the sponsorships are always um, interesting because, mm-hmm. like, I always, you know, I, I come from a a management background in my degree. Yeah. So I know how to manage companies. I know how to make things work in terms of um, operations. So when I see people do things, I'm, I'm kind of – I'm always, you know, I, I'm like, oh, I, I should tell them that this is probably – bad <laughs> but it's like I, I i can't i can't be too forward because in their eyes they're looking at me like you're just an athlete you don't know what you're talking about but i know i know what i'm talking about because you know i've managed companies before i know what i'm doing I, yeah i've i've done this before so i'm like okay like i i'm always appreciative of sponsorships but to me like you get used to it sponsors come and go you know, you're always switching sponsors yep. and it's like it's it's not anything that you know I have against them it's or they have against me it's just that um it's, it's business it's business and it's usually management issues like uh, how they manage their sponsorships and what they're doing in their marketing it it's always um um either too much or not enough it's never a perfect balance. So yeah. it's like either they're doing too much where they're getting too many people they're sponsoring and then they're realizing, oh, man, we're spending a lot of money. Or it's not enough and they're like, okay, we only sponsor three people and, you know, they don't they don't really talk about our product very much or whatever. Yeah, they're not making an impact. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a sidebar here real quick because I've had as many as 18 sponsors in one season for my off-road racing. Mm-hmm. And it, it's a lot of work and, and uh, very appreciative. Um, quick plug, Lucas Oil has been taking care of me. <laughs> yeah. uh, Method Race Wheels, <laughs> Rugged Radios. Um, but you know what's interesting about sponsorship too, and you probably see this as a manager and somebody that's ran businesses, a lot of sponsors will sponsor you and give you whatever it is that package is, but they leave it at that. They right. don't put a budget in for activation of that athlete. Exactly. So yeah. when, when I run, you know, we talked about working with Michael Buble before the show mm-hmm. that I worked with for so many years. Not only did we have our budget to activate his sponsorship, but we also had a budget to activate what we were going to do around him. Right. Ads, entertainment, customers, and all those other things. Exactly. And I really think that that's where they drop the ball at. Exactly. So sponsors, usually they have very either very few athletes that they don't do anything with or a lot of athletes that they don't do anything with. And it's like you got to do stuff with these athletes. you yeah. got to put them out there. You have to make promotions. You have to schedule meetings and things to get the athlete out there. And I think that's where sponsors drop the ball. When they sign an athlete, they they get excited and they're like, yeah, we got them. But then they don't do anything with it. It's yeah. like I, I should be seeing, like, if I see someone sponsored by someone, I should see at least five ads a year. Yeah. Minimum of that athlete yeah. with that sponsor. And I don't see any ads. I don't see anything. It's like – it's like uh, we it's just like creating a roster and just looking at it and it's like there's no there's no value in looking at a roster. You have to get that roster and you have to circulate that roster through the public yeah. and let Con- them know. Even congratulation ads. Exactly. You know, yeah. Hey, so and so won the race. Yeah. You know, it's an excuse to run an ad to tell your story. Right, exactly. And you know, take advantage of that. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, I actually raced for Yokohama years ago. It's one of my first tire sponsors on another team and uh those guys know how to activate but i don't see them activating as well as they possibly could within the spartan series yeah you yeah. know um we used to do autograph signings and we'd have hero cards and all these things that we'd hand out to the public as athletes and i don't really see a lot of that at these events they they do it um but they only sponsor two athletes right now yeah uh, face denning and uh robert killian yeah. so they do that um and and then robert killian and and uh face denning they'll do 
they'll do signings and stuff like that, meet and greets okay. at, I, at, the, at the events. But, you know, they're not at every event. They're not at everything. So it's like, oh, well, should we sponsor more people? Yeah. <laughs> or somebody just, that's here yeah. regularly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's like it, it's just, um, you know, it, it's kind of more bang for your buck kind of thing. It's like, okay, if we get more athletes and they have a good good amount of people and, and they're able to re- essentially press the flesh and they kind of get get more out there, it, that would be a lot more beneficial. Yeah. Hey, Melissa, if you're listening from Yokohama, I got a perfect candidate for you in my office here. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a nice car and a good personality. Um, so, so you're starting to succeed in Spartan racing. You're picking up some support here and there. Um, what, at what point did you decide there might be a business opportunity within this to expand beyond your own sponsorship and what you're doing? Yeah, it's kind of it kind of fell into my lap. Um, basically, a lot, I had a lot of people coming up to me after races, and they noticed my running, and they noticed um, that that was very much my strong suit. And I'm still I'm still learning stuff about uh, obstacles and stuff. So, like basically, we we'd come together into an obstacle. They would leave before me, and then I would pass them back, and then I would be gone. Uh-huh. So. Um, I got a lot of, uh, interest from other athletes saying like, Hey, you know, I noticed your running is just amazing. Like, Mm -hmm. um, you know, would you be willing to coach me? And at first I was very, uh, very like not interested in doing that because I was like, I know the involvement and, and the, um, process into coaching and, I was like, I don't know. I'm very. Uh, I I didn't want to do it, and yeah. I was like, I don't like it because I've never done correspondence coaching. Mm-hmm. I've never done it before. I've always been hands on. I've always worked with my athletes one on one. So correspondence coaching, to me, I was like, I don't know if it's going to be beneficial for athletes. So I was like, I, I'll take one athlete at a time. Mm-hmm. So I took, I think my first year, like we took like three athletes, and that was it. And I was like, okay, I'm going to coach these three athletes and. That that be done, and it was more through emails and correspondence, like phone and stuff like that, and it was okay. I would say it was okay. Mm-hmm. It, it, it to me, it didn't it didn't really. Um, I, I I was like, I can maybe max out at ten people. Okay for you or okay for them? No, oh, like <laughs> yeah, it, it, exactly. It was okay for them. Like I was like, it was okay. And I was like, I could get like I told my wife, I was like, I can maybe coach ten people. And I was like, that's not that's not a sustainable business, you know. It's just just a hobby. It's just fun, whatever. And then um, actually, I, f- I found a um, a training website mm-hmm. that that um, allows me to update and um, manipulate a schedule and to provide it on someone's phone. Mm-hmm. So once I saw that, I was like, I got to get on this. Like this will be awesome. It's called Training Tilt. So mm-hmm. I was like, oh, okay, let's let's give it a shot. I looked at it. It looked great. Um, that that first month, I picked up like an additional five athletes, and in terms of work and in terms of stress on me, it was very minimal. Mm-hmm. I was communicating more with my athletes than I was messing with their schedule and having to do all that stuff, like the administrative work. Yeah. So I was like, "This is great." I'm like, yeah. "Now I can have a lot more athletes." So last year, I started that. And I was getting into it and, and starting to to get that going. And I didn't advertise. I didn't do any anything crazy. But, um, yeah, I, w- I was able to get a, a healthy number of athletes, um, around like 20, um, going in the year. And I was like, this is great. Like, everything's going good. And now I I really, during this off season, I really took a huge um, uh, just focus on the process how I uh, communicate with athletes at the start, mm-hmm. how I uh, set up my athletes in, in the system, how I set up my, the schedules for the athletes, and then how the communication process goes while I'm coaching these athletes. And now I'm getting better feedback. I'm getting better responsiveness. Um, I'm getting better results out of my athletes. And everything's going in a positive motion. I'm like, oh, this is great. And I feel like I'm sustainable for up to 40 athletes hmm. as opposed to being only sustainable for 10. So. Right. And by the way, you're working your regular job at the, at, at this time yeah. and training and competing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and raising two boys and yeah. raising two boys <laughs> and being a great husband. Yeah. Um, 
So are these athletes that you're training, are they Spartan athletes? Or are they across the board, different types of runners? Yeah, they're across the board. I mean, I'm training a guy for uh, Boston Marathon right now. Mm-hmm. He qualified last year. He was his first marathon. He qualified. Wow. So now he's going on to the Boston Marathon. I uh, got another one I'm training. Uh, he just did a half marathon in uh, in Madrid. Mm-hmm. So, wow. yeah, I, I, all over the world, everywhere. It's just, it's an amazing thing. People are coming to me wanting to be trained. So it's great. Yeah. Do, now, they're coming to you to be trained. Is this because of your success in Spartan racing? So, so you have a name behind what you're doing? Um, or is it because of your own efforts to promote yourself online or you've got a great website? I mean, you do have a nice website, but yeah. wh- where, where are these people from all, all over the place coming from? Uh, they're coming mostly from Spartan racing mm-hmm. because a lot of them like go in and out of Spartan racing. And then um, uh, I have some people in the running community that have come to me for training. So that's that's where I get those athletes. But, yeah, I mean, I haven't been uh, uh, advertising mm-hmm. until this year. So this year I, I've really been uh, pushing my Instagram uh uh presence <laughs> so i'm i'm actually starting to um post more and talk a lot more about uh, my coaching and mm-hmm. my athletes and just let people know that that's um that's basically what i do i i coach uh people so letting them know that i'm available and that i'm i'm more than happy to to coach them as well yeah so let, let's talk about that for a second cuz i think this is this is actually kind of a neat story now you mentioned you're doing more on Instagram, mm-hmm. and and you're gaining business because of what you're doing there. Yeah, um, you, you know people are following you; they're recognizing your success through through Spartan Racing. Do you have a Facebook page that you're pushing out to, or is it mainly Instagram? Mainly Instagram. Yeah, the Facebook I I have it. I have just the posts I do on Instagram go to Facebook, mm-hmm. but I really don't focus on my presence on Facebook because I only have like um, I I don't have a big following on Facebook. I think it's like. But maybe I don't know. I, I haven't checked it in okay. months, <laughs> so it's maybe like a thousand people following me or whatever. So I I don't I don't know if my presence is big there. Well, I think this is a wonderful point to make for you, and and it's a tribute to your success and how you're doing things. Is I, I believe a lot of people will look at social media and their value in social media and think, oh, I got to have fifty thousand followers, a hundred thousand followers, more followers to to build a business or to be successful around it or have whatever it is they're dreaming about having. Right. Clearly you just described a very successful business that you have and you you mentioned that Instagram's one of your primary tools Mm -hmm. that you utilize to promote not only your business but your success in Spartan racing. And um certainly people know you when you're out at the races, which is important as well. Um you only have 6,600 followers on, yeah. your, on your Instagram. Yeah. And I think that's incredible. Yeah. And what that tells me is that your message that you're promoting is probably spot on exact uh, to what you're able to do, what you're willing to do, and who you are. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's it's always important that you have the proper messaging in anything you do when it comes to a business. Right. right. And the fact that you only have 6,600 followers and this is one of your primary tools, your message is spot on. You're right. It's yeah. got to be. No, it's good. I mean, that's that's how I see it. I'm like, I that you know, this is the conversation I'm having with sponsors. It's like they're they're like, oh well, I don't know. You have sixty six, you know, sixty six hundred followers. Um, we're kind of looking for someone more with like fifteen thousand and Nick, almost double what you have. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I don't I don't think that's the issue. I think it's how you're conveying your product. That's the issue because mm-hmm. if you if you can't do something with someone with, you know, even 3,000 followers, then I think there's something wrong with your message because you should be able to gain product and selling points off of that. Yeah. And if you can't, then you need to work on your marketing more than anything else. So, yeah, I'm always in those conversations. (laughs) Well, you know, again, you've built a business, a Mm -hmm. successful business. If you have 40 clients a month, hell, if you have 20 clients a month. Yeah. You know, uh, as a training coach, yeah, um, mainly online, mm-hmm. right? A correspondence coach, as you, as you said, from what you've got now, that's that's huge. Yeah, no, if, I mean it's it's great. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's doing well, and I'm like, it's just a little, you know, small little thing, and it's going, it's growing every year. Yeah, and I'm like, it, you know, the what I want to do with it is. You know, in the future, I want to sponsor athletes. Yeah. That's that's my goal. It's like I want to take what I'm doing and I want to say, hey, you know what? I'm 
I'm building my own team. I'm doing my own thing because it's actually you know, beneficial for everyone else. Yeah. So then I coach my athletes and.